Alternate history, if you're not familiar with it, is it's a genre of fiction. It's one small step for me. And it basically asks, what if? What if things had turned out differently? What if famous inventors, say Edison or Tesla, never existed? Perhaps today our society actually would run on steam. Anacrocon is a yearly convention and it's for anyone who loves history or alternate history. They have historians who are experts in their field and you can learn a lot from going to their panels. They got that and started putting that together in about 0 AD and it lasted to about 250 AD. And they have some incredibly talented recreational actors. I live my days in the bosom of my family, my farm and my books. I cannot live without books. And of course, I think the most recognizable aspect is the alternate history, uh, such as steampunk. The term steampunk itself isn't coined until the 1980s, but it's drawing on a much older you know, sort of literary tradition. In the very simple uh, sense, steampunk is Victorian science fiction, and also Edwardian, uh, you know, 19th, early 20th century. It basically takes the aesthetics and the technology of the 19th century, and then it applies it into a science fiction context. You have 19th century science fiction authors like Jules Verne, H.G. Wells. You know, they're looking forward and saying, well, what would a, a flying machine look like if they actually worked? You know, we're looking at it from the perspective now. We're saying, well, we know where the future goes, but we can say, what would it have looked like had they invented it? We're just doing it from the benefit of hindsight. I came to Steampunk kind of almost unwittingly. I sort of looked backward when I realized there was a name for all these things that I enjoy and went, wow, I was into this from pretty early on. And it just took us a while before we realized, wait a minute, we could combine this with our music and have even more fun and not have to choose between doing Steampunk and doing music. A couple years later, here we are. I think the major thing that ties our music into steampunk is the idea of anachronism, this idea of taking elements and bits and pieces of different time periods and things that don't necessarily go together chronologically and recombining them in new and interesting ways. There are so many possibilities and that's what I love about it. I am part Anishinaabeg, which is a collection of tribes from the Great Lakes region, and I just wanted to show that you can have an interesting multicultural flair, but you can still integrate parts of the old European sort of formula. I turned traditional beaded belts into a corset. My war club is scavenged from an old, uh, you know, steampunk rifle. My headdress is actually made with scrap metal and uh, found watch parts as well. You can do so many things in steampunk fashion. You can do military, you can do the explorer, you can do a very fashionable gentleman or lady. There are babies who show up in costume and I love it. Just come to a steampunk convention. Put on a nice vest, put on a nice skirt. People will make you feel welcome. See, I'm looking for myself in a piece for a lady friend. If you listen closely, you'll actually hear the pop. <sighs> Carnival Epsilon is one of the few remaining actual circus sideshows left performing in the U.S. today. part of a tradition that's kind of dying out. During Victorian times, there were actually a lot of, of the oddities, and we want to bring that back. And the steampunk events actually fall right into that. People come out, they see the show, they love the show, and they love the fact that it's historically accurate. And we always get great reactions anytime we come out. 
go right ahead. I know you've been waiting all weekend for this. So instead of starting with a forward, you start going backwards. And you start off stepping with your right foot back, gentlemen. There's a variety of things that draw people to steampunk. Part of it is just the aesthetic. I mean, Victorian aesthetics are really beautiful. You have very elaborate clothing. You've got a, really a, an appreciation of beautiful things. And this, I think, really people are, are drawn to that sort of in reaction to modern society where, you know, things aren't intended to last beyond a generation. Things are intended to look identical. There's also a, sort of a reaction to what I like to call the cult of the casual. You know, throughout history, every generation sort of rebels against the, the fashion uh, of the previous generation, and it's usually a rejection of formalism. But casual is so predominant that people now are getting drawn towards the formalism of the Victorian period as a rebellion. I think everyone has always wondered, what's it like to be a star? You know, what's it like for people to stop and ask for an autograph or say, please, can I get your picture? And I'll never experience that. I mean, maybe I'll be some famous lawyer, but people don't generally stop and, oh, I really want to get you in that suit. You look fantastic. But when you're at the convention, you get to be a rock star for a day. You get to be recognized by something you created, and it feels great. You'll see costumes out there that you just can't not smile because it's so wonderful, it's so creative. You know, maybe it's a movie you love or someone did something and put a twist on it and you're just like, wow, that's fantastic. And I think that's one of the things that draws so many people to this because it's what if. Anything's possible.